you're a video editor like me, you'll come home from a hard day's work, put your feet up and watch a good old Netflix documentary. Something like The Last Dance, The Tinder Swindler, or F1 Drive to Survive, for example. And if you're anything like me, you'll be sat there watching these documentaries thinking, this editing is awesome. How the hell do they do this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video if you wanna see how I turn this. <coughs> into this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to edit your videos in that lovely, clean Netflix style that they do for all their original documentaries. And I'm actually gonna give you a bit of an insight into how I edited this video right here for our good friends over at Octagon MMA. So to set the scene, we got a brief from Octagon saying that one of their fighters, John Hathaway, former UFC fighter, was coming back to the Octagon after eight years out of it due to illness. And to mark his historic and triumphant return, they wanted to make a mini Netflix style documentary. Naturally, we absolutely jumped at the chance to work on this project because the story was already there and was absolutely epic and would be a really, really fun one to produce. So we got to work. We only had a limited amount of time to get this video done before he actually made his return that weekend. So our plan was simple. Number one, we'd shoot B-roll of John training down at his gym in London. Number two, we would interview John's training partners, his coaches, and John himself at the gym on that same day. And number three, Octagon's English commentator, Brian Lacey, would act as narrator for this project, and we'd film all those shots right here back at the studio. And if you've ever seen F1 Drive to Survive on Netflix, You'll have seen the sit down interviews that they do. They just look super clean, super professional and really moody and just cinematic. We wanted to emulate that in our documentary. And if you want to find out exactly how we set up the studio step by step, good friend Josh Goodgen has a video over on his channel you can check out right now and he'll show you step by step how he achieved this look. So head over there if you want to check that out. But today we're talking all about the editing process. So after we got the narration shots, it was time for me to get my grubby mitts on all that lovely footage and try and start piecing it together. So let's jump over to the computer and let's see how I edited this thing step by step. So let's just have a little look first off. So back in 2010, 2014, MMA was just creeping into the mainstream and the UK still dreamed of having a world champion. Our biggest hope, the fastest rising star at that time, was John the Hitman Hathaway. So immediately in those first couple of seconds, those first 14 seconds we've got, Brian introduces John Hathaway pretty quickly. We've got a little name card for Brian that comes in to show who he is and then pretty quickly shows John Hathaway. That's the guy that this whole piece is about. I think it's important in this to get that across straight away who this is about show him on screen. We also started off the edit with this track called Danger Cinematic Dark, which I got from Envato. Um, it's a website where you can basically get royalty-free music and sound effects and among loads of other things um, for a subscription. And they have some really, really good stuff on there. And this is what I started with. So we'll listen to that isolated. It just adds that immediate intensity that that we want this is about a fighter this is about a guy eight years out of the cage is coming back and this is showing i think that that audio really shows just how much of a monster this guy still is like there's still a threat there john has a record of 17 and 2 he trains out of one of the most renowned one of the most notorious so there you see we have got a second camera angle there so i showed you a little bit of how we set it up so these are actually the camera angles that we do have so we have this one here, which is just the main camera, really cinematic, really nice. And then we just have a little B cam here that's just a nice extra shot to cut to. And I've also used, so we'll see here. One of the most renowned, one of the most notorious, one of the most successful gyms in the world, London Shoot Fighters. So there I've used that first cam. I've cut back to that just to show almost like an importance, like this is a this is an important aspect. This is where he trains, this is where we're going to. We're switching to a new location. London shoot fighters. Two. There you go, now you're good, now you're good. Two, five. 
and then we end up at the gym at London Shoot Fighters. Two. I've also used the timing of the punches in the audio to switch camera angles. The coaches there have been with him since day one, and when you hear about how they talk about him back then, that's what. Also, in this bit, I uh, I cut out music, um, so I did have the the, the sort of droney at the start. Um, that was a really good impression, by the way. But I decided I did have it here in in, so it sounded like this. London shoot fighters. And I just felt it was not needed. It was not needed. It wasn't necessarily that intense of a moment. It was just switching locations. So I decided, nah, cut it out. Keep the rawness of the place, the location. Hathaway has been a, a talent since the very beginning of uh, when he started fighting. Solid ground, solid stand up, uh, great submission skills. So there I tried to reflect what he was saying. So he was saying solid ground. So I showed him on the ground, solid stand up skills, showing him stood up and then solid submissions, which we had him sort of trying to attempt a submission there with his coach looking on. Um, so I tried to capture that there. It's been great when he came back to actually feel how good he is. John Hathaway. So here I started to introduce some music because we're sort of moving on from that grittiness of the gym and we're really sort of delving into his story now. So this guy, Felix, is talking about how he used to hear of him before and how good he was. And then we cut back to Brian and we sort of we're moving on the story a little bit. And now he was set to make his UFC debut. Imagine that at the age of just 22. You get called up, you're sitting in the pocket. There's another J cut, so John starts talking before you actually see that footage of him talking. That is a J cut. Music hits, curtains open, you get to walk in, you hit the cage, Bruce Buff is in there introducing both of you, you know, sir. So in this bit, I really loved how the music complemented what he was saying. So this was, he's basically talking about, this is a star-making moment. So he walks out into the UFC octagon, Bruce Buffer's introducing his name, and you can hear these sort of twinkly sounds in the music. Music hits, curtains open, you get to walk in. You Which I just thought really reflected that star-making moment, that twinkliness of the music really sort of complemented that part of the story. I mean, take the first three fights. He fought Tom Egan, the Irishman. So in this part, I obviously would have liked to have used some of the UFC footage from when he fought these people that Brian's referring to. Um, but due to copyright issues, we weren't able to include any of that fight footage from UFC. Otherwise, we'd have had the video copyright strikes potentially taken down, which wouldn't, it just wouldn't have been worth it. And he finished him in one round. Then they put him against an American wrestler. So what I talked about earlier with us shooting in 100 frames per second, it was so I could get these nice slow-mo shots. He out-wrestled him. So he out-wrestled him. We're showing him just sort of out-wrestle his training partner. That was John's debut on American soil, and he manhandled one of the scariest fighters to ever compete in the cage. Again, manhandled him. He's manhandling his trainer there, tipping him over. I got so much experience from competing against the best people in the world for... There you go, another J cut. So you hear John before he actually comes in. I love me some J cuts and you see them all the time in Netflix documentaries. When I was competing in the UFC, uh, you know, I got diagnosed with uh, ulcerative colitis, which eventually made me pull out of uh, three matches. And I just sort of timed it. I had to manipulate those two there just so that the piano would hit there when the, the camera cuts, which you can see. You know, it wasn't his own fault. It wasn't him, you know, going off the rails or getting distracted. It was a, con a really nasty, horrible medical condition. And here I just tried to use some slow-mo footage of him just standing around. Luckily, there were some shots where he sort of looked, you could see it as potentially a little bit deflated, which is how he would have felt at the time. So I was trying to use and find footage that we had of him that day that could have reflected how he might have felt when he got diagnosed. Or he would, you know, have to cancel coming to train that day because his body just wouldn't do it. And we so when he's saying like his body wouldn't do it, I'm showing him like this is towards the end of the training session where he's really drenched in sweat. He's, you know, tired just to show the exhaustion he'd have felt trying to train while he was diagnosed with this. Your dream, the dream you had achieved of fighting at the highest level had been taken away at the same time. I guess there was some dark times. I was always a, a fairly positive person. There we go, another example of a J-cut. You see this kind of thing all the time on Netflix. So back in the studio when they do the, the interviews, the sit-down interviews, 
you'll see a cut like this all the time where they'll finish what they're saying and it'll linger on that B cam, that sort of more cinematic cam, and it'll just linger on almost for too long, like an uncomfortable amount of time. That's what I kind of tried to replicate here. It's taken some time to kind of build my strength back up and be able to get back to being fit and healthy, but we managed to do it. So here we are, it's taken. Here we go, so this is where the story turns. We've heard about how great he was before, and we've seen the downfall that he's had due to the illness and how hard that was on him. Now we're sort of getting right back into it. Here's the redemption. He's coming back and the music really reflects that. So as soon as he says, and we've done it, the music kicks in. Fit and healthy, but we mentioned it. So here we are. It's taken everything. He has a date and we will see John the Hitman Hathaway finally make that walk back to the cage. October Making that walk back to the cage, obviously using the footage of him walking back into the cage. It just, it writes itself, basically. Finally make that walk back to the cage, October 15th, Octagon 36 in Frankfurt, Germany. And again. And with this footage, I just wanted to establish the location where he's going to be fighting. So you can see some of these location shots that we got sent by Octagon. Which is eight years on, like you said, fighting in the uh, biggest show in Europe on a huge stage. I can't wait. I've been so excited for this. I mean, I always love going to Octagon anyway. It's one of my favourite shows in the world to be. So those shots there, I really wanted to show some more magnitude of the event. So you can see the crowd, how big it is. You know, it looks great. Fans cheering, massive fireworks. It's a huge event. It's a big deal, him coming back. Czech uh, people in now the German for you, but the Czech people are super excited about fighting. So here, the music, we have an impact, um, a sound that I used here. I just used that impact basically because this point in the story, there's almost, we're planting those seeds of, hmm, there's a bit of doubt here. Is he gonna be as good as he used to be? So I wanted to use that impact as, you know, we're really building up to this big moment. Like he's, he's, he's getting there, he's going to be amazing. And then, but is he going to still be as good as he used to be? I think the reason why I, I think I can obviously still compete is such a, a, a good... I love this shot of him walking out of the darkness and it just slowly, him walking into a lighter area, like him just walking from dark to light. It's him walking out of that dark time in his life. This shot sums up the story. Makes me excited and wonder what we will see on October 15th. Another little uh, reverse whoosh it's called there. And wonder what we will see on October 15th. Cinematic subsonic bass drop as well. This is what makes me excited for his Octagon debut. Because this, this is not a story of redemption. This is not a comeback story. This is a resurrection. This is the resur... I mean, Brian just sells it perfectly. Like, his wording, just how he phrases things, how he's scripted this, is just perfect. It really bigs up this fighter. It makes him seem like the greatest fighter that's ever lived. Brian, top job. You make my life super easy in editing. <laughs> of John the Hitman Hathaway. And then here we go. This is my favorite part of the whole piece. This is where I wanted to really show this is him training super hard. This is what we expect to see from him in the cage. At the end of the day, this mini documentary is supposed to bring hype uh, to this event that he's a part of and that he's fighting on the card of um, and to get people to buy pay-per-views. So this is where we really had to show this is what he can do. This is, you, you, can't, you can't miss this. You can't miss this fight. Uh, so this end bit had to be perfect. So I put it in black and white to make it super gritty. Um, and it was just high paced. Every time there was an impact in the music, I added an extra impact hit as well, as you can see here on the sound effects, just to really add as much power behind those punches and those transitions as possible. So I'm just gonna let you watch it. Return of John the Hitman Hathaway. Basically, I tried to time his punches to the music. So just them close up angles, just gritty, like you can see the intensity of those punches. That one was just perfect. Like I sped that clip up just a little bit. Like I think all these clips I sped up slightly just so that you can see the speed, like 
it just adds more intensity to it. If I'd have left them as they were, they would have been intense still, but with that added bit of speed, it just looks even better. And with that one, I had to speed that up so that, because he did the da 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 to the music, but he was just doing it a little bit slower, so I sped it up just at the right sweet spot, and then he hits it da ba da ba da on that pad, and it just, it looks great when he does that in time to the music. And then cut to him at the end. With this clip, I wanted to almost have the camera trembling in fear of this fighter. So I added uh, a little thing that comes with Final Cut. It's not a, an extra plugin that you need to get. It's just called Earthquake. Uh, you can find it just in standard Final Cut. And I just had it just slightly. And without it, the camera's just, um, just normally panning back. And then with it, you can see a bit of tremble. A bit of like a sideward shake. And also in the music, you can hear that clock ticking. That was also intentional. I found that piece and I thought the clock ticking would indicate almost, you know, the time has come for John Hathaway to, to perform and to get back in the cage um, and also indicate to his opponent, you know, your time is up, so to speak. And then just had the final click with just a little reverse whoosh and, and that's it. It fade, goes to black and then we just see it fades up into the into the fight card. That's the guy that he was fighting. John Hathaway did go on to win that fight as well. So it was, all this project was not in vain. He did go and win. If you want to check out the full video in all its glory, go check it out on the Octagon MMA YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. And that's how I turned that video into a mini Netflix style documentary. Please make sure to leave a like. It helps a lot. Leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you again next time. Cheers.